pink poodle crabs join the poodle pack it's time to get creative and make you laugh make your own art today pink poodle crafts is the way what a good boy hey crafty family it's me and today we're going to do something fun and it's something that a lot of us have done already in the past, um, unless you're really new to crafting and paper crafting and stuff. But um, a lot of people have done this in the past, but I found something that was a little bit new to it. Um, and it was inspired by somebody in my uh, Facebook group, the Pink Poodle Pack Creative Crafty Playground. Um, so tickets. Uh, people have been altering tickets for years. I see, I've seen it on YouTube for years. I've done it. Um, people have done swaps of tickets, you know, altered tickets and what have you. Um, I did it very briefly, like once. Um, I did some painted tickets with stamping on it, and I did some paper covered tickets, like scrap paper cover tickets. And generally, what the premise is is you take some tickets. Now I have regular tickets that are like on the big roll, you know, that are perforated on the big roll, but I couldn't find them. <laughs> so I have these and these are like the cheapy version of them. They're like the dollar store version where they're just square or rectangle. They don't have the little cutouts on the corners like the ones on the roll do. As an example, just to show you what kind of tickets I'm talking about. Um, generally people would take the ones that are on the roll and they would cut off a strip of 10 or, or like, well, eight, usually eight, six, eight tickets, you know, like that big. And they would gesso them and then paint them or gesso them and cover them with paper and do other things. And who knows, maybe this idea has been done too, but I didn't see it. I haven't seen it. But this, uh, there's a lady called Angie DeStefo who made some altered tickets and they were so cute because they were done with napkins. Now I would not seen that, but it, I mean, it, and it, I just thought it was such a cute idea that I told her I wanted to do a video showing how to do it. But it also inspired me to do something else because I couldn't find the tickets that I wanted to use. I can show you how to make tickets of your own without even having any tickets. All you need is some paper some sort of paper cutter or scissors or a way to cut paper to a certain size and a hole punch. That's all you need. So what you do is you take a piece of paper. This is not really cardstock. It's a little lighter than cardstock, but I'm going to use it because I have it. And you're going to cut a piece of paper that's one inch by like this is an eight and a half by 11. So this is an 11 inch piece of paper. So I'm just going to do that. Um, now you could do one inch or you could do one and a half inch. I personally think that the one inch is too small. I like one and a half inch. Now everybody has always done them when they make handmade ones, they always make them one inch. But I think if you do not one and a half, one and a quarter, I think one and a quarter is a better size. Um, I just think it's a better, I don't know, I like that size better. So I'm going to make a couple and I like to do them at one and a quarter inch. And you can do them as long as you want, but generally each ticket is going to be two inches. So you want to make, your, you know, it's generally like since this is an 11 inch paper, I'm only going to be able to do up to 10 inches. So I just, you can just cut off the last inch. Um... So really, if it's it's 11 inch paper, I'm just going to do these three one and a quarters that I'm going to cut off. Oh, my sweater gets in the way. I'm going to cut off the, um, see, and it's just the difference between them. It's not much, but I feel like this is a better, just in, I don't know. I just, I personally like it. You want to do, you know, you do what you want to do, but I'm going to do one and a quarter inch and now I'm going to cut an inch off and now they're 10 inches and now we're going to get a scoreboard oh that's another thing you need a scoreboard but you don't need a scoreboard you can use a ruler to do this by taking the ruler and measuring every two inches and put a mark and on that mark you would take something to make a score mark in your tickets and that's going to be like where the tickets would pull apart kind of thing 
but I'm going to use my scoreboard. Most of us have a scoreboard, and if, if not, like I said, you could just do it the way I just said. And you're going to score it at every two inches, you're going to put a score mark. So two, four, oops, I just almost put a hole in there. Two, four, six, I forgot this isn't very thick paper, and eight. Two, four, six, and eight. I'm going to do it again on these. Two, four, six, and eight. And again on these. Oops, almost put a hole in it again. I gotta remember I'm not using cardstock. Okay, so that's all you need the scoreboard for. So now you would fold them kind of like you would tickets, back and forth. Of course, mine are uneven, back and forth like that. And then you could take your bone folder or whatever and you can kind of crease the edge um, just so that they stay down. I'll do it to all of them. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm going to show you how to make them look like tickets. Now there are other videos out there. And I learned this in a video from a video from a long time ago. Because... Uh, but they did it with one inch, one inch wide, and I like that a little bit thicker, so I do mine one and a quarter. I just think it looks better, in my opinion, and it gives you more room to work on, too. So here's your row of tickets. That's what you're going to typically get out of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You're going to get a whole bunch of strips, like, that are this long. Now, you could do a 12 by 12 piece of paper. You can, you know, you can attach them together and make rows longer because the general idea of these is not to be torn apart. The general idea of these is to put them on a project or just tuck them in a journal or put them on a journal page where you kind of stick them like this so that they're kind of stuck up a little bit. As you can see, like they're kind of stuck up a little bit. You would glue them here, glue them here, maybe glue it right here and kind of stick them up so that they look you know, on a project or a canvas or something you're doing, or, you know, just decorate them and put them in a little envelope for somebody because they're cute. And if they decide they want to tear them, they can. That's kind of how you do it. Now, here's the thing. If you want to further make them look like tickets, you're going to need a hole punch. Um, just a standard, regular hole punch, like whatever this is, quarter inch, I have no idea. And you're going to punch the edges. And what you're going to do is you're going to punch out, you're going to put the, the punch in, and I don't know if I can zoom in enough to show you this. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, hold on a second. Um, let's zoom a little here. All right, so let's see. Let's see. Well, this is it. Huh. Well, anyway, I don't know if you could see because it's so difficult to do this, but you don't, obviously you're not punching a hole in the corner of the ticket. You're punching it as if you are just punching a chunk out of the corner, but it's like half of the, half of the punch, kind of, like almost like a quarter of the punch, really. And you're just making, like, if that one's a little too small, I can go back in and, whoops, at least I thought I could go back in and fix it. There we go. It's much easier after you do the first two because when you're doing it on the actual line here, you're just going to line it up halfway into the punch. Like, in other words, you're just going to, we've all done this before where we make like a little half punch, half circle punch, like that. So you're going to do that. And it's easier to do it on this part than it is here. Because here you're doing just a quarter of that circle, kind of. This thing gets stuck. It's kind of a cheapy. So you're just going to go along. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not going to really notice it. But you're going to go along and do this. Now, if you're going to decorate them, 
you might want to wait until after you decorate them or at least get the layers of paint and stuff on them or because if you're going to cover them with any kind of paper it you'll have to go back and punch them all anyway so i'm just showing you how to make the basic tickets right now and also i'm going to show you how to punch them a different way too which is a little quicker if you happen to have the crock the crocodile um corner chomper and this is the one that has the deco end and the stub end and it says it right on it it'll say stub and deco um the stub end is literally a ticket stub so you would put your ticket in and punch it out and it's a little bigger of a chump or chomp but they look really cute and then you can just fold your ticket in half and do the do a few at once like that so you could do them just like that so at home, if you don't have one of these, you can just use a punch and have them like that. Or you can use the chomper and do it like that. Um, whoops, that's the deco end. Well, you could do the deco end too if you want. There's the deco end on it. You can make fancy tickets. I've done that as well. So it's up to you. You want to make them fancy or do you want to make them look like tickets? I kind of like the fancy one for when I'm doing like vintage tickets. I'll use the fancy end, the deco end, when I'm doing like vintage tickets. So there's several ways, that's several ways you can punch your tickets. So if we're going to decorate our tickets, now if you're using already, my nails are disgusting, if you're using already, you know, done tickets, like a roll of tickets that you have, because most of us have those, you know, tickets laying around for projects, you would gesso them first to make them white. Um, and then you would do your art or whatever you're going to do on them. And you, if you're going to put a napkin on them, you're definitely going to want to gesso them. Obviously, this doesn't need to be gessoed because it's already white. So it only has to be gessoed if it's not white. So I'm going to take a napkin that I like. I'm going to peel off the layers. And hopefully I can peel off the layers <laughs> without it taking nine years. There we go. It's getting there. Sometimes if you, you grab a little chunk out of the corner, you can grab it easier and peel it. And I know you can use tape too, but I never have tape on the ready to do it. So this to me is easier most of the time, most of the time. Okay. And then we're going to decorate them and I might as well do, where the other ones go? Well, I have these. Oh, and I have these. These I had already punched with the hole punch when I was messing around earlier. Uh, actually, I'll just do these two for now. And what I'm going to do is take some Mod Podge, which basically I just use some glue and water. And that's uh, two parts Elmer's glue, one part water. And this is not gonna fit all the way to the very end, but we can piece it together. Or you could do it like that but then your other piece won't fit. So either way, it's just, it is what it is. So I'm going to not worry about the fact that my one end is going to be without napkin because this is a smaller napkin. You can also use tissue paper, um, printed or otherwise, and that would also work. And I'm going to use a little strip from this edge here because I left a little bit on the edge to adhere to that end over there. And then you can also put glue on top. But when I saw hers, I was like, you know, I never thought of doing napkin over it and it looked so pretty. And I just thought how cute it was and it was a good idea. And she just inspired me because I hadn't done tickets on my YouTube channel ever. And I mean, I've had my YouTube channel for like three years now and I've never done altered tickets on it. I've done all altered tickets, but just not on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know why I've never done them on my YouTube. I guess because I was kind of over the altered tickets a bit. You know, you kind of get bored of things. And altered tickets have been around for like ever in a day. So I think I just got like 
like bored of them years ago because they were around in like i don't know it's like 2012. that was so 2012. where's my thing go i dropped it uh -oh. i dropped it i had it right here are you kidding me right now hmm. okay dropped an entire piece of napkin and can't find it let's let's try that again I mean, seriously, I'll find it in my sock later or something. Just try not to drop it. I'm going to use this to cover the edge here. You're not going to notice that it's covered this away. And I can try not to paint my sleeves of my sweater. That would be ideal. Now, when it comes to choosing a napkin, the re this is the best reason not to do the one inch uh, tickets, the one inch wide tickets, and to do the two or the one and a quarter inch, even one and a half inch if you want to. But I think one and a quarter is like ideal size. But um, a good reason to do the one the little the extra quarter inch is because of the fact that you'll get more patterns showing on your on your tickets from your napkin and but at the same time you got to be careful choosing a pattern for your tickets not too careful but just keep in mind that it is a small area so if you have anything with large uh large um pattern you're going to want to make sure that it's filled, you know, if it's a large pack, you want to make sure it's filled in so you get a lot of color and make sure it's not too sparse in areas where you're not going to get any color on some of your tickets, unless that's what you're going for. You know, if you're going for the like minimal pattern look, then, you know, then that's cool. Cool beans. So I'm going to use the same napkin for these two because I might as well. But you can use any napkin, any pattern, any kind of thing, even tissue paper. It doesn't have to be napkin. It'll do the same thing if it's tissue paper, like printed tissue paper. It doesn't have to be napkin specifically, but it's the tissue. It's a nice, you know, it gives it a nice, like, you know, I don't know. It gives it a nice look when you do use a napkin. Before I do the whole top, I'm going to use that. Piece here to fix my side piece because I always overlap it a little bit so that it I used to use scraps a lot and 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 do my napkins with scraps I would like put a whole bunch of different scraps on the on the tickets and then cut them out at the end and I always thought that looked really pretty and it does it looks really pretty because then you get like scrap tickets that's what I would call them scrap tickets because I've done like, you know, ticket swaps before. And I might do, we might just do um, a challenge of tickets. Because since we haven't done them in our group, and I think it's a fun thing to do. In our group, we do, every month we do challenges. And what we do is, instead of just doing the challenge and then you just keep your challenge and you don't do anything with it. Because we don't swap in that group. But we do do, um, we do do. I said do do. We do, um challenges and the premise of the challenge is you do the challenge and then you give it away to somebody else in the group like happy mail you don't expect anything in return it's not a swap um you just pick somebody randomly and we have a group we have a a, a file in the group that has addresses for the members of the group and you can if you're a member you could put your address in there and or people can ask for your address it's up to you and they put their address in so that when it comes time to do something like that, somebody, you, you know, you can go in and choose somebody out of the addresses that are already there to send your, whatever your challenge piece is. What was that noise? Oh, piece of plastic. I was like, what was that? Piece of plastic fell. Story of my life. Anyway crap everywhere going everywhere all right let me dry this real quick and then we can move on
All right, when it's dry, that's the best time to cut the excess napkin off is when it's dry. Because when it's wet, you risk your fingers getting stuck to the back of it and or the front of it where the glue is and then it peels up your napkin so always wait till it's dry and you're going to want to wait till it's dry to do any punching or anything like that or obviously decorating um you know this is still a little wet actually it's easier to cut when it's not wet and plus i don't have my right scissors i'm using these crappy scissors Okay. These scissors are crappy. My other good scissors are in the other rooms. I was using them to cut fabric with. I'm going to have to get myself another pair of those Tim Holtz scissors because I find myself using them a lot in my Etsy room to cut like pieces of fabric or this or that. And, and then I have to keep going back and forth, taking them out of there and bringing them in here. But they're my favorite scissors, those nine inch scissors from Tim Holtz. Yeah, see, this isn't dry yet. Let me dry this more. It's hard to cut through napkin when it's wet because it just kind of mushes in between the scissors. And that's never a good thing for anybody because then you end up messing up your tickets or whatever you're putting it on. that's drier and we'll cut easier and it's about to storm outside and my scissors suck sucky scissors but I'm sure a lot of you have made altered tickets um, but this is a good new idea if in case you haven't done it yet um i don't know if it's that new actually i just know that i was i was inspired by angie is it angie or angela oh boy angie de stefo or angela de stefo girl don't come for me i apologize my brain just drew a blank but anyway i'm gonna say angie um i saw hers and she said that she used napkins she posted a picture in the group and she had mentioned Ooh, it's, it's raining all of a sudden. Um, she mentioned that she used napkins to cover them. And I was like, oh, I've never done that. Why didn't I do that? I was like the queen of putting napkins on everything. I even was, you know, hello, focus. Don't be drunk. Don't be drinking on the job camera. Do you know, you remember how they had the DIY network? And it was, I don't know if they still have it on TV or not, but they actually did a feature on me. Well, it wasn't me, but what they did was it was my ideas that they took and they had actors or their people, whatever the hell they are, act, I guess they're actors, um, recreate them on their website and on their TV thing. Um, and they were up on their site and on their, and they did them on their TV, but they had them up on their site for like a long time. And it was ways that you can use napkins in, um, in your uh, everyday decor. And one of the things it was, you know, about decoupaging napkins, because I've been doing this for like 20 years with napkins. I used to make candle holders and sell them. I've told that before. But one of the things that they did, and basically what I had to do was I had to give verbal, written uh, instruction, because back when they did this, I didn't have a way, there was no like, oh, upload a video somewhere. It wasn't like that. This was back in, uh, uh, maybe this was back in 2000-ish, uh, 2001, and really there wasn't like, oh, let's upload a video somewhere. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't, there was like video online, obviously, but it was a lot harder for somebody to just upload a video. So what they had me do is they had me call, they talked to me on the phone. Would you just focus? Thank you. They talked to me on the phone and what I did was I sent them the written instructions a full, like in very detail on every single project. And they had me do it in full, absolute detail with pictures. So that I was able to do. And then um, they would have me 
they would they after they got the instructions and read everything and and made sure they understood it you know from what they can understand they had somebody call me and the person that called me would go over everything step by step as if they were telling me how to do it to kind of make sure that i was sure that they understood how to do everything and once they did understand everything um you know, then they did, they went on and did their thing and, you know, did videos on it. So, um, and the things that they did was, uh, okay. So you know how like you have trim in your, in your house? Oh God, my fingers are gross. Can't wait to get my nails done this week. Um, you know how you have, and some people have like a chair rail along like the set, you know, like in the middle of the room or whatever, the chair rail or any molding for that matter, really, that's going to show. But mostly for the chair rail because that's kind of like a decorative piece. Well, I did a whole thing about how, and this was my idea that they recreated because they were looking for ideas and I had submitted a whole bunch of stuff on de decoupaging napkins. So I did this thing where you, you know, obviously you have to take the chair rail off, which is very easy to do actually. All you need to do is take the back of a hammer and just start loosening it. It'll come off then you can put it right back on. You take it off and you paint it white or you could gesso it, whichever, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be white. And then you take your favorite napkin and you actually decoupage the napkin onto the chair rail. Now, depending on how thick the chair rail is, usually chair rail is about this, maybe two inches. Um, it looks really pretty when you do it, especially like a pattern like this where it's not lot, nice and colorful. So you would pick something that matched your house and you would decoupage it and it would be this really cute decorative, you know... Uh, and nobody would know that it was napkin. Nobody had any idea. And they would be like, what is that? It's so beautiful. Blah, blah, blah. And it looked really nice. Then you take a gloss varnish and you'd go over it. Or you could do like a satin or a flat varnish if you wanted to. Um, but the gloss looked really pretty. Um, I also did, one of the other projects was decoupaging a headboard. What, um, decoupaging a headboard. Um, what else did we do? Um, oh, my brain is drawing a blank. decoupaging um, the panel on the front of your dishwasher and like you know your dishwasher has a, a panel on the front of it you can actually take it off um, and you can actually decorate that panel it's usually um, you know you they have it where it's removable because you could change colors or get a replacement if it breaks or gets really dirty or nasty but you could take the panel off generally on most of them and if you can you don't really need to take it off to be honest but it's that front panel that's usually either black, white, stainless on your thing. Well, back in the day before like stainless was super popular or whatever, if you had like a real shabby, chic kind of kitchen and you wanted to be like cutesy about it, you could take that panel and decoupage napkins onto it so that it looked like real shabby, chic and cute. And I mean, it didn't hurt the functionality of the dishwasher at all. You would just cover it with a lot of varnish so that you can wipe it clean. Um, the other, one of the other ones was, um, brain's drawing a blank, brain's drawing a blank. What was the other one? Oh, doing a chair, doing like a wooden chair and let's see, doing, uh, oh, doing the centers, you know, like in some people's house they have. And now I'm going to draw a blank again because I can't remember the type of molding this is and, and the type of thing this is. A lot of times it's in dining rooms and a lot of times it's like it, they have the chair rail molding and then they'll have like focus. And then they'll have like the, the rectangular cutout in the middle and it's like a decorative cutout. Um, so anyway, they had uh, that was one of the projects too was to decoupage in there napkins anyway my point is i did a whole bunch of napkin decoupaging was like my big thing and i got a tiny bit of notoriety for it back in the early 2000s whenever the hell that was 2000 it was either 2000 or 1999 or something but anyway when you get your tickets all done and they're dry um you could do your punching technique uh like i showed you to do your things or I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do one of them in the ticket, which is the ticket stub side. And hopefully I can go through all of them. Yeah, I can. 
because then you only got to do the four corners of one pretty much and they're all done and there you go very pretty and then the other ones i'm going to do with the deco as thunder shakes my house fun good times okay do the deco okay so then you've got these tickets here so now what we can do is we can do a variety of decorating on these by adding some cute little elements to them and what i'm going to do is i'm going to get off of here and i'm going to get some things out that i can use to decorate these with and I'm gonna let this storm pass for a minute because it sounds like it's just bad. And Tigger's like wanting to sit on my lap. So I'm gonna let the storm pass. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna decorate these with some cute little items. You can use rhinestones, you can use little, we're gonna use little quotes, things like that. And yeah, they'll look really cute. So we will be right back in a second. 